This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. This video is sponsored by Haig Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV to get a 15% discount on damage assessment, CE training, industry certifications, books, and tools at HaigEducation.com. And by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. People will, will kind of come to this industry because they're they hear that it's it's great money and that you can you know work when you want to and not work when you don't want to, which is kind of true. Um, but they stay for you know the good ones. They stay for the the interaction um, with people, the ability to help people, even on small claims, stuff that's not all over the news. Um, and uh, that's that's. Again, I mean, that's that's kind of the most bit has been the most rewarding part for me. And the reason one of the reasons why I stayed in it for so long is because every single claim is an opportunity to sit down with somebody and, you know, we, we live in a, a dynamic world, right? Stuff is going to happen. Hurricanes are going to happen no matter what we do, right? The disasters are going to happen. We have to live somewhere, right? And people, you can pick any part of the country you want to to live in. There's some kind of a disaster that can hit that area. You know, you got earthquakes out west. You got hail and wind. You got fire. You got hurricanes. You know, heavy snows, flooding. You name it. Those things are all going to happen. Um, and people have insurance for a reason, right? So, um, for us to sit there and say. And this is, you know, sometimes you get a little pushback if you're at a cocktail party or a backyard barbecue and you're meeting people. Well, what do you do? Well, you know, I do. Oh, so you want people to have, you know, damage. You want people to have. So you you make your money off of destruction and da da da. Technically, yes, but it's kind of like accusing the fire department of like enjoying their job, right? Yeah. They would prefer that there was no fires, right? So they train and they practice and they they get as good as they can to be as effective as as effective as they can to help people when there is a fire because there's going to be a fire, right? Um, so I kind of put it in those terms. Obviously, we're not, you know, carrying people out on our shoulders and you know getting cats out of trees and things like that. But um, I think that you know the insurance claim industry is is a kind of unique in that it's sort of has this like general like sort of conventional wisdom that were that insurance companies are out to like save money on everybody's claim and you know drag out the process and not pay and be you know difficult to work with and while i'm sure that in certain circumstances that's absolutely true it provides a lot of opportunity for people like you and me and, and people who are kind of customer focused and like i want to help these people focused um to Take those people when they have a claim for whatever it is, it's going to happen no matter what, right? We go there and that person is already in the middle of like their life, right? Anything's going on, you know, the kids are getting ready to go off to college or they're just coming home from college or they just wrecked the car or they just, you know, you know, good things happen in the family, you know, bad things happen in their lives. And this, the hailstorm or the tornado or the, you know, the, the dishwasher breaking, they don't, it's, the, they're not going to pick like the best time for, to happen for that person yeah. in their particular life. So when you're, when you're, when you add a claim, which pr brings along a lot of uncertainty and that first, first initial, like, um, thing that people have like, well, I'm, I'm going to get screwed. I just know I'm going to get screwed. My, my brother-in-law said that if I don't do this or have an attorney or da da da, da that I'm going to get taken to the cleaners and it's going to be take forever. And I'm just going to have to pay a bunch of money out of pocket. That's what they're thinking, right? On top of yeah. every other thing that they've got to deal with in their life right now, right? So the big opportunity for, for at a customer service level is to go in there and starting with the very first phone call is to let them know that you're going to be kind of like a like a little safe place, right? You're not a source of anxiety. In fact, you're going to be a source of reducing that anxiety because you're answering their questions, you're, you're setting expectations, you're proving that you know you're they're trustworthy by exceeding, you know, meeting those expectations or even exceeding those expectations. You know, saying you're going to be there at nine o'clock and you're there at eight fifty five. Um, you know, I'm going to call you back on Thursday, but before five o'clock, you call them back. Thursday morning, right, or Wednesday afternoon, or whatever. So you you 
you set up the homeowner to feel like they're in good hands with you. That has nothing to do with any particular insurance company. I just said that um, yeah. because it's it's adds they're already like stressed just because they're that's their life, right? Um, if if you come in and you're they feel like they're they're you already made up your mind before you even show up at the house. You can get out there and you're denying the claim. You know, you be in the house for five minutes and you deny it. Um, and you didn't really look around, you know, their anxiety level is like skyrocketing because they just they feel like they're they don't know what to do. They they feel like they're being like pushed down and they have no way to like, you know, feel like they've they can get some justice in this situation. But if you go in and even if you have to deny the claim and you treat them with dignity and respect, you build rapport from that very first phone call. You're setting, you know, re realistic expectations and meeting and exceeding those. When you get to that final conversation, you spend some, you know, an extra half hour, maybe an hour at the house looking around, asking questions, you know, but what are, is it possible if the water came from over here and not there? Is it possible if it came from over there, right? So places that are covered, I want to help, you know, in your mind, you're thinking, because you really do want to, and you want to make the, the insured feel like, that you're there to help them and you're trying to find a way to pay for something. And after all of this, you're like, listen, I'm sorry. I can't, you know, I can't do it. You've built up a bunch of grace with them. Right. Yeah. So they're going to be like, well, yeah, man, I guess, you know, we're kind of getting that idea and, you know, but I really appreciate you, you know, taking a look around and at least trying for us. I mean, that's right. like your customer service numbers skyrocket that gets back around to your company. Because they know that you know the, the carrier and the IA firm and everybody they 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 see that you did a good job. They QA'd your file. Yes, she was right. It's denied, um, but the, the customer gave her a one hundred on their on their right, their right. Uh, customer service survey. Right, um, even though they may have given the agent a zero and the person that took that in, it was did intake for it a ten because they were rude or they were overworked or whatever, you showed up. You're the face. Um, and so all those things together to see, and you were saying you, you can ramble and rant. This is, I, I, I <laughs> no. Adjuster TV. We have not even begun to procrastinate.